can you sing your favorite climate change song for the people while we're doing a little intermission? It's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> Welcome back to Living in the Pacific Northwest with Hal Bird. I'm Hal. This is Jared. Hola. And today we are talking about climate change, moving because of climate change, and something called climate refugees. So that's what we are covering today. If that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Hal Bird. I'm a licensed broker and realtor in Washington State and love working with people who are moving to or moving within Clark County, Southwest Washington and the greater Vancouver, Washington area. So if you need any real estate help, whether you're buying, selling or investing, make sure to shoot me a text right here, 360-818-4438. Do it now, let me know your name, uh, where you're coming from and what you could use some help with. I'd be more than happy to help and look forward to hearing from you. Hey guys, this is a uh, very serious subject, uh, kind of a somber subject. Um, it's one that, you know, type of subject that Hal and I sometimes, you know, debate should we, should we broach or not, uh, because we're not experts, right? So for all the trolls watching who are already warming up their fingers to type something in, you don't know what we're talking about, we're telling you up front, we're not experts about the climate. We're not experts about uh, climate uh, refugees or Fujis. Shout out Fujis, hashtag. Um, but it is a, a, a subject near and dear to our hearts. So one of the reasons we relocated here to the Pacific Northwest and uh, how you can probably confirm, you get a lot of messages pretty much daily about people who have similar concerns. So again, we're, we're not experts. We're sharing our personal perspective, feeling experiences. Uh, we do have some knowledge. And, um, and again, we encourage you, you know, to share yours in the comments if it's constructive, right? I mean, there's enough trolls out here, all due respect, we're not experts. So uh, I'll go ahead and nip that one in the bud up front. So yeah, you'd be shocked how many people reach out to me and say that they're wanting to relocate out of whatever state that might be, uh, Texas, Florida, Wyoming, and you know, so many of them are saying like it's either too dry or they're worried about flooding or hurricanes or uh, fires, like all sorts of things that, that are becoming more common and more prevalent and more extreme in this climate change that we're living through. Um, so it's surprising to me and I noticed that some people don't bring it up, but if I mention it, they're like, actually that's the reason that I'm moving, like this one I spoke to yesterday, so. Yeah, I mean, and Unless you're under a rock, which I don't know how you'd be watching this video right now, uh, but I mean... Maybe they're like Patrick from Spongebob. Never watched Spongebob. But the news is pretty much undeniable right now, right? That the changes, the, the aberrations, or what once were aberrations of weather, are now becoming more and more commonplace. And we just wanted to put a video together for, for people who may be feeling like, like we felt uh, not too long ago, and, and maybe looking for some some other alternatives just put together another resource and hopefully not your first time coming here to house channel this is what we try to do subscribe you put your uh make sure you put your youtube hat on. we're using the word climate refugee very loosely because that word is also associated with um people in third world countries who are displaced and have nowhere to go like the people in haiti most recently like their homes are decimated they're flooded like they literally are displaced. Right. So I just want to address that because I don't want it to come off like, oh, these first world Americans who have perfectly good and nice homes in some parts of the country are just moving to another part of the country. That's not really equal to people in third world countries who are right. physically displaced. Point. Yeah, because I mean, as of this past weekend, even in, in Japan, there was a massive flooding and people were being evacuated. Um, and Japan, like Haiti, has a, a history, a uh, very uh, unfortunate history of natural disasters. So again, we're not trying to make light of anything. This is, this is a serious topic to us. So let's talk about some of the causes for people wanting to move. So literally every Western state, California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Utah, 
Arizona and, and New Mexico all have some level of droughts in various parts. So like the drought here in Washington state is in Eastern Washington. If you look at ours, it's not none, but it says moderate to severe drought, it depends. Whereas like most of California is showing, it's called the D4 level, exceptional drought. Can you see it's like dark red? I'll put this in the video. For those of you who don't know our story, uh, Hal and I relocated up here to the Pacific Northwest to, uh, to Vancouver, Southwest Washington area uh, over three years ago uh, to a large extent because of some concerns we had for climate, um, a change in climate, and some threats that we perceived in regards to a shortage of resources, namely water, right? It became apparent to us that if you combine any sort of natural disaster, an earthquake, an invasion, um, zombies. anything, <laughs> zombies. Hashtag thriller. <laughs> you know that my mom would not let me watch that when I was a kid. She, like, she was a smart woman. She thought that my sister and I would be scared of it. If you, the whole thriller video, have you still watched? Have you ever seen it? I don't think I've watched the whole the thriller entire? video. The entire? Oh my God. I got so scared. The beginning before the music video. I'm going to go and watch it. Put in the comments if you ever watched the whole Michael Jackson. <laughs> so my mom wasn't over exaggerating. No, nah, she's probably smart on that. So yeah, we're like, if you combine the fact that California has virtually no water, like, I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily want to drink out of the Columbia, but I mean, I guess you could if you had to. It's better than nothing. I got a water straw. I don't know about you. I got a water straw. We're about to get a Berkey. Which I Berkey, if you, want, if you want to sponsor this channel, Berkey, you holler it out. <laughs> we're open to sponsorship. <laughs> so yeah, we just were like, if there was anything that that went wrong, like California really couldn't afford to have two things go wrong. So at the time when we started thinking about moving, it was in a drought and we're like, God forbid anything happens. There's too many people and just not enough natural resources. Those kind of stories are only happening more and more. As of right now in California, if I'm not mistaken, there's a... a leave a mandatory water reduction on, on the amount of water. Matter of fact, you had someone reach out to you recently who's in the landscaping business who's thinking about moving specifically because it's hard for him to do his job with the, the severe water restrictions in, in the part of California he lives in. So again, the our friend, the mighty Columbia, we jokingly call it, uh, behind us is one of the main reasons we decided to move here. We wanted to find a place that had some natural resources and, uh, excuse my, my French, if if, if the shit ever hit the fan, uh, figure worst case scenario, you know, you can make your way to the river with a bucket and uh, at least you wouldn't die from thirst. So just recently, this is as of a day or so ago, the Colorado River, first ever shortage declared amid record U.S. drought. I'm like, you know, it's, it's really real when you hear about the Colorado River um, having a shortage. We have, we're having record droughts across the country. There's also headlines of the Hoover Dam fed by, uh, well, I guess Lake Mead fed by the Hoover Dam, which is at an uh, all-time record low. So again, just some really real concerns. So if you're if you're having those concerns, uh, like we did, we can totally relate, um, which again, one of the reasons we wanted to put this short video together. I guess we were ahead of our time, huh? Can, can probably wait, according to some people. So again, it doesn't matter where you are in your journey, more and more people, this is a very real concern. So we have a lot of people who are thinking about relocating. I mean, heck, even in Texas, over this past winter, there was a freeze over. Uh, you have people with no power for uh, days and days, uh, you know, under freezing temperatures. We try not to make this political, even though it's hard. Everything is political these days. Uh, but the fact that the climate is changing is, is kind of undisputable, uh, indisputable at this point. Another reason would be, or another cause of, maybe we'll call it like climate migration instead of refugees. I like that, but climate migration. So the next cause would be fires. That's a lot of people's concern. And I have people asking about what is the the fire risk here, I guess. So do you want to speak to kind of what our experience has been when it comes to wildfires in the Pacific Northwest, maybe compared to California? I mean, we live in the evergreen state, right? So there's lots and lots of trees. You probably see it across the river. Um, so that, that is a real concern, especially when you compound the heat and the drought. A very real experience for us when we were living in Southern California was we went out to a motorcycle or car show. 
at LA Auto Show. So went to the LA Auto Show. This is in November, if I'm not mistaken. We left the house and there were some fires, not close to our house, but not, I mean, probably within what, 10 miles maybe? Yeah, I like time, so within 30 minutes, probably. Mm -hmm. But nothing that was, you know, a direct threat to our house. In the time we rode to the <laughs> LA Convention Center, we were there for about, what, 20 minutes? As soon as, almost as soon as we got there, got off the motorcycle, went into the convention center. We got a call from our neighbor that said there was a fire that broke out in this, basically a field that was less than a mile from our house. And it erupted into like 500 acres, something crazy, mm -hmm. almost instantly. And so we had a discussion where like, well, do we... <laughs> stay and continue our day because our we don't know if the house is um, threatened right now or do we leave and go back and we decided to leave and go back and she decided i wanted to stay i'm <laughs> like uh, hey i'm a car guy we're at the car show if it does hit the house there's nothing we could do now um, you did say that i did you did i said that of course hashtag car guy hashtag and i want to see the new jeeps you know <laughs> so we ended up literally turning around and haul ass and back home uh, and not wood, nothing happened uh, we didn't get any closer so we have some personal experience you know with with uh, fire scares and then compared to our experience here which is mostly dealing with smoke so when we first came to visit it was during the Eagle Creek fires in 2017 um, last year we've dealt with smoke what at least two of the three years we've lived here just recently as of the last couple days uh, Firefighters have successfully 100% contained the uh, fire in Southern Oregon, Blue Lake Fire. Why? My mom knew that even. Shout out to Lita. So uh, again, just recently, within the last couple days, uh, there was a huge fire, 100,000 acres. Can you can fact check me on that one? Uh, what's called the Oregon Blue Lake Fire was uh, successfully contained. So again, it's 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 a real thing. It's a risk. How many acres? 413,717 acres. Wow. What did you say? Oh, 100,000? This is crazy. The Blue Lake Fire, once the largest in the nation, is now fully contained. 400,000 acres. We also had rain, so it's been hazy here. We didn't get as much smoke as you would have expected from that because the way that the weather patterns were in the wind, it went, it like totally, the smoke totally missed us, went up into Idaho, up into Canada, down into the Midwest, and um, the East Coast was getting some of the smoke. Yeah. Um, so we got a little bit when the wet, when the wind patterns changed, and now there's a big fire in Washington. So we were getting some smoke from there. Yeah, a couple days ago, that's what the smoke was from, when the sun was like pink. So we mostly deal with the, the smoke versus actually your house being threatened, unless you live in the rural areas. Right, and I've only, I mean, to me anyway, in three years, there's only been one occurrence, and that was last year. Uh, I forget what fire it was, but it was, you know, when it got really bad and we had to have masks It was masks the one down on. in Damascus. So, to me, you know, we don't deal with smoke. It's, you know, the air quality is typically fairly decent here. Yeah, unless there's a fire, which, like, last year it severely impacted our air quality. And then one of the other concerns has to do with water, which is hurricanes and rising sea level that people who are relocating from Florida have talked to me about. Hurricanes don't really happen on the west coast and then sea level rise, even though the Columbia does flow out to the Pacific Ocean, the river, as we call it, the mighty Columbia River, is flowing towards the ocean. So there's not a lot of sea water coming back this way. Now, I guess if the sea level rose overall, that would co probably cause some level of rise in the... If the water, if I'm assuming if it slowed the water, the river flow into the ocean, it would back up and consequently rise. Yeah, but we're about, what, 60 to 100 miles off of that, so, I don't know. In the last, what, 30 years, one of our uh, old neighbors, she showed us a photo of one time that the Columbia flooded, and, um, I don't know, once in 30 years, maybe it's a once in 100 year event. So let's talk about the pros overall in terms of the general climate of Southwest Washington and maybe what some of our feelings are about the future living here. Yeah, so let's talk about if, if you're, uh, you, uh, someone in your family, your spouse, significant other are concerned about the climate, 
Um, let's talk about some reasons why, if you are thinking about moving and didn't know where right now, let's talk about some reasons why Pacific Northwest and specifically Southwest Washington might appeal to you. If you're concerned about climate, I think air quality is a big plus here. Our air quality is almost always impeccable and growing up somewhere where there was a lot of smog and pollution and haze, <laughs> I can really appreciate the the air quality. And I remember we when we traveled to Florida this summer and the air in Florida for me, not being used to humidity, just felt very sticky and dense. And I remember when we got off the plane and we left the airport and I was like, because you could just like fresh, crisp air and it's just, it was so nice. There is a difference between the low humidity and, and all of the trees that do their best job to suck in a lot of the carbon <laughs> dioxide, there is a, a notable difference. Yeah, you can definitely feel it. So um, air quality is a big one. What about access to rivers? Access to rivers is, was a huge one for us. So again, our, our friend, the mighty Columbia behind us, uh, is a huge source of uh, not only water, but obviously uh, electricity for our region. Uh, one of the reasons we have a fairly low electric electricity rates. Uh, you talked about that in one of the other videos, uh, <laughs> which you should check out. But yeah, it's because of the hydroelectric power. Yeah, and correct me again, fact check me, but the Columbia River is, is the fourth largest. I think that's what I remember when we were doing our homework. Fourth largest river, what? Just the fourth largest river. It is the fourth largest river by volume. Stay in school, baby. So Columbia River is, is the fourth largest river by volume in the United States. And having access to, to fresh water, uh, to running water, which is uh, typically going to be cleaner, uh, because it's it, the, the water's in motion was it was something that we considered uh, maybe something for you to consider did you know that it said that the columbia is one of the world's greatest sources of hydroelectric power and with its tributaries represents a third of the potential hydropower of the united states oh can you tell them who's cooking out they didn't invite me <laughs> my vegetarian you're like like a i don't know cartoon and i'm floating like away. That's because you didn't. That's because I ate vegetables. Not that you don't eat Come on, Popeye. The Columbia is one of the world's greatest Hello. sources. Fun fact. The Columbia is one of the world's greatest sources of hydroelectric power and with its tributaries represents a third of the potential hydropower of the United States. Guys, that's massive. If that impresses you and you want to move here, you know who to call. Can you sing your favorite climate change song for the people while we're doing a little intermission? It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. Who sings that song? We looked that up. <laughs> Guys, do you know how often he sings that song around the house? song by R.E.M. R.E.M. It says Speedwagon, baby. This subject is, is real for us. We don't make light of it, but we do, you know, try to keep a right perspective of it. So it doesn't, you know, kind of mental health is more important now than ever. So um, I've seen that little song and um, we just try to remember the little things and, and control what we can control, have a good perspective, be the best version of ourselves. And uh, Spend yeah. all the time together. Spend all the time together. We can't treat every day like it's our last. And, and treat the every day like it's your birthday and Friday and Christmas. Yeah, don't wait for your birthday your to, to be good to yourself. Uh, house had, uh, shout out to Sade. Every day is Christmas and every night is New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> After we record this, he's going to go in and have a Spotify jam session. No, baby. <laughs> so we talked about air quality. We talked about access to water, rivers, lakes, and streams. Yeah, because we might reference the Columbia a lot, but there's also a lot of tributaries and, and streams and runoffs. And so if you're one of my clients that's looking for acreage right now in Southwest Washington, uh, let me know if having a stream on your property is something you want to know about because you can have a year round stream. Some streams are seasonal, but you can definitely get running fresh water on your property if it's something that you're actively looking for.
more. So the next thing, let's talk about mild climate, right? Uh, mild climate is going to mitigate some of these kind of temperature and climate events. So we hope. We hope. <laughs> by nature, so we have, we are blessed with a fairly mild climate, right? It's not like the desert, and it's not like you know the Midwest or the Northeast where it gets super super frigid. So that was another reason that we liked it. In the summer, relative, we have mostly 80 degree weather, 80 you know mid 80s to a few weeks. Typically, a few weeks a year gets up into the 90s. Never has gotten to 100 in the summer when we've been here, except for this year when we've had two heat waves. Um, one at the end of June, which is the worst. That's probably in the news that you saw when Portland was 116. And last week we had a smaller heat wave in the low hundreds. Right. But by and large, we had, we're blessed with a, a mild climate. We're, we're technically considered a rainforest, this region. So again, fairly mild winters, um, very few days where it gets to freezing. Um, the, the springs and summers are pretty magnificent as well as the fall so yeah. mild climate overall um, and then so I was highlighting kind of the, the warmest time and then the coldest time during the day it's like in the what, mid 30s on the coldest days of the year mostly in the like low to mid 40s in the coldest times of the year and then everything else is in between so our range is, is very different we don't have swings like the desert we don't have these like huge for the most part, 30, 40 degree swings where it's super hot during the day and freezing at night. Doubling back around to access to, to water, let's talk about rainwater collection. So I think this is something that we're gonna see more and more, and I've talked to some of my clients about this, is rainwater collection in terms of as climate change progresses and we're moving through whatever changes are gonna happen in the world, I think this is gonna become something that's a lot more prevalent in terms of um, having the ability to capture, clean, and reuse rainwater. Washington has relatively favorable laws when it comes to collecting water, whereas in Colorado and Utah, it's actually illegal to collect rainwater. And so that's something that you might want to think about and consider if you're relocating for, what are we calling it? Climate migration. Climate migration preparedness. Um, kind of all run hand in hand. So that's a great fact to know, rainwater collection. Um, and we're very strong proponents of having water, um, I think to the tune of, is it how many gallons per day per person? You should have one gallon per day per person at a minimum. At a minimum, one gallon per day per person in your household. For at least three days, because that's oh, as long as you can survive without it, and the more water that you can store, the better. Right. And what we did, just as an aside, you know, again, in the beginning, um, and still now, we don't have all the money in the world, so we just will buy and set aside things as we can. Water, we're luckily, st still relatively cheap, right? So you can buy a gallon of drinking water for about a dollar. Uh, so grab those, you know, when you go to the store, set them aside little by little. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at right now is stackable water storage solutions. Um, but, you know, like anything else, it has has some costs attached to it. Uh, and then one of the things that you've come up with that I think is really smart to talk about is a premium on shade in this, I don't know, like we're almost in this post-COVID world, but not really. And I, we're, is it gonna be like post-climate change where like climate change has happened and we're dealing with the effects of it and the human race is possibly dying? Or <laughs> is it like... I saw that in a Netflix movie the other day. Oh yeah, which one? Mission Shane. <laughs> Part two. Um, so you've come up with this idea of shade and a premium on shade. The thought process is, you know, and those of you guys who've been in a hot climate or cracks up every time we go to a store, you know, there's any kind of shade, you'll see people who tend to be the people who care about their cars the most or maybe the people who work there. They uh, kind of congregate in and around the shade because as we all know, you know, the sun gives light, but it also is pretty harsh as well. But as it pertains to housing in your home, having a lot that's shaded, having trees, not only kind of shield your house from some of the harsh sunlight, but it also helps your air conditioning uh, work a lot more efficiently. So there's some advantages there. And it's just, it's actually better from a wear and tear standpoint on your house. To contrast that, there's also reason to look for southern exposure, which is also great for growing vegetables and growing food, which I think is something that's going to also become uh, more important to people as they migrate 
due to climate. You talk about that a lot in your book. What book? The book you're going to be writing soon. Oh. Stay tuned. I think if you can get a shaded house, but that still has a little bit of extra land where you get some sun that you can grow mm -hmm. vegetables, I think is great. And a great part about being in the Evergreen State is you can imagine that the, you have a, a high likelihood of finding a great house in a great neighborhood with some natural uh, mature trees. Uh, mm -hmm. We see that all the time and we'll post some pictures and videos. Yeah. Um, but again, you'll have a, a much easier chance of, of finding that here. And when we're out, out and about, there's a few things better than driving down just a really, really nice tree-lined street. We have some of the, probably the best I've ever seen in the country here in, in the, the Northwest, specifically in Portland and in uh, Greater Vancouver. This is going to be a deep dive. Again, we're not experts or scientists. We're regular people who have some, some real concerns. And like I said, in the comments below, um, hopefully constructive comment. Let us know if, if you're having any of these concerns. Um, if you maybe you already moved because of something, maybe something that we missed, uh, or if, if you can relate, or if there's something that you want us to cover in a future video, um, by all means, leave that in the comments. We we really uh, are encouraged by and relish you know constructive comments. Um, and don't expect everyone to agree with us. We don't want you to agree with us. We have a perspective and we'd love to hear yours as well. So, and really this video is, is meant to talk to people like us who also maybe, you know, feeling uneasy with things that they uh, are experiencing or may kind of, you know, sometimes you have that, that intuition, right? And if you are, you're thinking about moving, we wanted to put a video together like that for you. Yeah, especially if you're considering either like Washington versus another state, mm -hmm. if you're in the early stages of deciding, or if you're looking to work with someone who can think with the same lens that you're using to relocate. If you are thinking about migrating due to climate, there might be things that I would see or point out that could really help you in your journey in finding the right property as you move forward. Because I mean, it's not every year that you're gonna be buying and selling your house so it's a pretty serious decision and I think you want to work with someone who gets your needs so if climate migration is on your mind please reach out to me shoot me a text right here let me know I would love to help you with your purchase as you relocate so with that being said we'll catch you next time ciao, ciao. Uh, Columbia, uh, which is partially in the flight path of PDX. So we, uh, you may hear a plane or two going over. We're also using this term. But sir.